Welcome fans of Fate Grand Order. I am Avon. You are watching FGO Tips, and today we're talking about summer farming. We are pushing through the Dead Heat Summer Race, but the Ishtar Cup continues with the Death Jail Summer Escape. Four more rounds with new currencies and craft essences, so let's get right to it. This is part two of our summer event this year, and it's going to work a lot like part one. We have three new currencies though, and they are candies, noodles, and coins. We also have four new event CEs, one in the shop and three in the gacha. For the shop, we're talking about the five star dive to blue, which will boost the drop for three of those currency types by one. There's only four available in the shop, but if you end up with a lucky drop from one of the quests, you can limit break it to boost drops by two instead. On the gacha and friend point banner, we have the three star Caldea Beach Volleyball, which will boost candy drops by two or three after max limit break. You can also use them to boost drops for junk parts from part one. The 4 star CE available on the banner is King Joker Jack, and it's going to boost noodle drops by 2 to start out, and 3 after maximum limit break. This works for titanium plates from part 1 also. The 5 star CE is Midsummer Moment, and it's pretty nice for quick based servants, with a 10% quick boost, 10% crit boost, and 3 stars per turn. I still prefer the Holy Knight sign from the almost weekly Santa Altar event, but this isn't bad. Best of all, during the event it's going to boost coin drops by 2 or 3 after limit break, and it works for mag wheels as well. And of course, don't forget that the banner CEs from part 1 still help out here. Sugar Vacation for Candy, White Cruising for Noodles, and Summer Little for Coins. The list of bonus servants is a bit different for part 2. All of the new servants still boost drops by 2, and all of the old summer servants still boost drops by 1. But there's also a plus 1 bonus for the other racers, Professor M, Babbage, Tesla, Edison, Xion Zhang, MHX, and the Caster of Storytelling. There's also a plus 1 bonus for some of the servants we'll see in the story for part 2. Enkidu, Ketz, Maeve, Nightingale, Carmilla, Gorgon, and the Assassin of Shinjuku. We also have booster items just like part 1, but their effects are a bit different. We'll have spoons for a 100% increase to star generation rate, meat for a 50% boost to NP gain, and hammers that boost NP damage by 50%. Just like part 1, we have 4 rounds of racing with cheer quests each time. The drops for each team vary from round to round, but there is always one team in particular that's best for each type of currency in a given round. I'm going to focus on the highest difficulty quests for each team, but the drops are similar in the lower difficulty quests, so you'll still want to farm with the same teams even if you're using the lower difficulty variants. For round 1, the best place to farm candy is with Team Satisfaction. You're up against all sabers here, so archers like Summer Helena, Summer Altria, Summer Anne and Mary, Tesla, and the Archer of Shinjuku are perfect. In the final wave, you'll have to fight a Manticore with more than 170,000 HP, and Siegfried with 125,000. If you don't have quite enough archers, Maeve is also an option thanks to a skill that can charm males, and a Noble Phantasm that does bonus damage against males. MHX is also a reasonable weapon against Sabres. My last two recommendations are going to show up in every single team for mostly the same reasons. Those are Nightingale, thanks to a little bit of healing, bonus damage against most classes, and a skill that boosts her damage to, and defense against, humanoid enemies like Siegfried. And secondly, Summer Martha, who will take half damage from archers, thanks to being a ruler class servant. The best place to farm for noodles is with Team Tyrannical Shooting Star. You're up against all assassins here, so try to bring casters like Summer Nero, Xion Zhang, Caster of Storytelling, Edison, and Summer Marie. We even get Babbage as a nice 3 star option. These casters are extra useful thanks to the team's preferred boost item, which will increase NP generation by 50%. Once again, the final wave features a Manticore, but this time it's Jack fighting with it. If you don't have enough casters, Carmilla can help out with her Noble Phantasm that does bonus damage against females, and Nightingale can help out again since Jack is humanoid. Of course, Ruler Martha still takes half damage from assassins. The best place to farm for coins is with the Prefect. All of the enemies here are archers, so you'll want lancers like Summer Raiko, Summer Tamamo, and Kidu and Summer Kyo. Fighting alongside the Manticore in the final round this time is Atalanta. If you don't have enough lancers, you can try Carmilla for bonus damage against females, Nightingale for bonus damage against humanoids, and Martha for resistance to lancers. In general, these are the only three teams you'll want to farm from during round one, unless you only have one or two CEs for a certain currency. If you need to use half of your CEs to boost one currency, and another half to boost another currency, then you might want to farm at one of the quests that split drops between the two. 
This is not ideal though, so try to pick up the four copies of Dive to Blue from the shop as fast as you can, and consider spending some friend points for the three star CE if you need it. For this round though, you can get candy and coins with electric steam. The enemies are a mix of lancers and casters, so bring the bonus sabers and riders. Candy and noodles will drop for team Killer Demon King against riders and berserkers, so bring bonus assassins for this one. Noodles and coins will drop for Desert Beauty against Riders, Lancers, and Berserkers. Bring bonus assassins and sabers here. When round 2 starts, the drops and enemies will change. You'll want to try farming candy with electric steam this time. The enemies are all Lancers, which is a bit rough because the only saber on the bonus list is Summer Fran. I hope you were lucky on the banner for part 1! In the final wave we fight Lee and a Gazer enemy. Nightingale is useful against humanoid enemies like Lee, and both Summer Tamamo and Maeve are useful against him because of his male attribute. Against the Gazer, you could try Summer Martha, who has a skill to boost damage against demons by up to 100%. As a bonus, she takes half damage from Lancers. The best place to farm noodles is with Team Desert Beauty. This time the enemies are a mix of Berserkers and Assassins, but it's two Assassins in the final wave. The first is Fuma, and the second is another Gazer. Once again, we can capitalize on the Meat's bonus to NP gain by bringing as many casters as we can. This includes Summer Nero, Xianzang, Caster of Storytelling, Edison, Summer Marie, and Babbage. Fuma is male, but riders like Maeve are a bad matchup against Assassins. Try Summer Tamamo instead. You can also bring Nightingale for bonus damage against Humanoids, and Summer Martha for bonus damage against Demons. For coins, you'll want to cheer on Team Demon King. The enemies will be Riders and Lancers, and the final wave is against Rider Iskandar and a Lancer Dragon enemy. Fran is still our only Saber, but Assassin options include Summer Nidocris, Summer Skahawk, MHX, Carmilla, and the Assassin of Shinjuku. Quick base teams are not a bad way to go, as the preferred boost item here will increase your crit star generation by 100%. Nightingale, Maeve, and Summer Tamamo all have bonuses against Iskandar, but none of our bonus servants have extra bonuses against the Dragon. Bring Summer Martha if you're taking too much damage. Tyrannical Shooting Star drops candy and coins, Team Prefect drops noodles and coins, and Team Satisfaction drops candy and noodles. Things get a little weird in round 3. There is no perfect spot for farming candy here because we get two different teams with noodles instead. If you have a lot of assassins, your preferred option for farming noodles is going to be with Team Desert Beauty against all riders. That means assassins like Summer Nidocris, Summer Skahawk, MHX, Carmilla, and the Assassin of Shinjuku do best. The final wave is against Drake and a rider version of the massive ghost enemy. Because Drake is a female rider, Carmilla is especially effective against her. Nightingale has a bonus against humanoids like Drake, and Martha inflicts bonus damage against the undead type ghost enemy. Alternatively, if you don't have a lot of assassins, you can try to farm noodles with Team Prefect. Instead of fighting a single type of enemy, you'll be up against archers and casters here. The final wave is Caster Nursery Rhyme and an archer version of a Hydra. For rider options, we have Maid Altar, our free 4-star Ishtar, Ketz, Maeve, and Summer Mordred. For Lancers, we have Summer Raiko, Summer Tamamo, and Kidu, and Summer Kyo. Nightingale does well against humanoids like Nursery, and Martha has bonus damage against demons like the Hydra here. For coins, you can farm with Team Demon King against Sabers and Berserkers. The final wave is against a Berserker version of the Ghost and the Berserker Lu Bu. Archers like Summer Helena, Summer Altria, Summer Anne and Mary, Tesla, and the Archer of Shinjuku help out in the first two rounds. But you can try to bring any of the heavy hitters to fight the Berserker bosses. Summer Tamamo and Maeve have bonuses against the male Lu Bu, and Nightingale does well because he's humanoid. For the ghost, Martha is the best option. Tyrannical Shooting Star drops candy and coins again, Electrical Steam drops noodles and coins this round, and Team Satisfaction drops candy and noodles again. That is, until round 4, where they become the best place to farm candy alone. The enemies here are all sabers, so bring archers like Summer Helena, Summer Altria, Summer Anne and Mary, Tesla, and the Archer of Shinjuku. The final wave features a saber version of a Soul Eater and Mordred. If you don't have enough archers, try Nightingale, Carmilla, MHX, and Martha. 
It's back to Team Tyrannical Shooting Star for Noodles, and this time the enemies are all casters. The final wave features a demon and waver as the bosses. Riders like Maid Alter, Summer Ishtar, Ketz, Maeve, and Summer Mordred are ideal. Maeve does extra well because Waver is a caster and a male, but if you need extra help, you can also bring Summer Tamamo or Nightingale. Martha does extra well against the demon. For the last bit of coin farming, you'll want to cheer on Team Desert Beauty. These enemies will be riders, and the final wave features a rider version of a demon along with Ozzy. Assassins like Summer Nidocris, Summer Skahak, MHX, Carmilla, and the Assassin of Shinjuku work well here. Martha does extra damage against the demon and against Ozzy because of his divine trait. If you want, you can also bring Enkidu, whose NP has a chance to stun divine enemies, but no extra bonus damage, unfortunately. Nightingale, on the other hand, does do bonus damage against humanoids, and either Maeve or Summer Tamamo can do bonus damage against males. If you're still trying to finish up more than one, you can pick up Noodles and Coins with Electric Steam, Candy and Noodles with Team Prefect, and both Candy and Coins with Team Demon King. After we clear all four rounds, you'll be able to replay any of these quests as much as you want while you finish up your farming. This means you'll have three options for Candy, five options for Noodles, and four options for Coins. Try to stick with the ones that match your servants best. For Candy, my favorites are Round 1 and Round 4, both of which are against all sabers and give you plenty of options to counter. For Noodles, there are three good options. If you have strong casters, stick to Round 1. If you have good assassins, stick to Round 3. And if you have good riders, stick to Round 4. For Coins, I would bring strong lancers to Round 1 or strong assassins to Round 4. If you're able to do all of those things, you should have no trouble snagging the most important items out of the shop. And if you have some apples to burn, you should have plenty of time to clean out the shop entirely. So let me know which quests you're looking forward to and which ones you're dreading the most. Did you manage to snag the elusive Summer Fran, or are you lacking bonus savers like I am? I'm looking forward to hearing how the event is going for everyone and answering any questions you might have for part two. In the meantime, I just want to say thanks for watching.